Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron. And I'm Kevin. And we're here with a brand new video series at your request. This is all about terrain. Uh, so a lot of you may have noted in our bat reps, we're not using a hex-based map system. We're using a free open map that uh, I think is referenced in the Strategic Ops. Correct. Um, where we're using a conversion model of one inch equal to one hex. Makes the math real easy when we're reading ranges or record sheets. Right. Uh, but it does require a little extra practice in using tape measures um, and arbor arbitrating uh, distances where we're essentially rounding distances to the right. first inch uh, or rounding up whenever we're a fraction into an inch. Uh, but overall, it just provides a lot more freedom and immersion in our gameplay. So we really like it. Um, so we just want to show you guys, for starters, our first video in this series will be on how we set up the map in general and achieve different levels. Uh, similar to that conversion, roughly we're rounding nearest to the inch uh, for each level. So as you see our topography goes up an inch, that's right. a level one. It goes up a second inch, that's a level two. Exactly. Similarly, buildings, we round off to the nearest inch for whether it's a level one, level two building, etc. Yep. And our forests are essentially perimeter based. So we just trace lines from trunk to trunk on the outer edges. And that's how we know whether you're in a forest, out of a forest, uh, but we're generally counting a majority of the base. And we're gonna get on all this in our future videos today. I think we're just gonna cover how to set what up you see here today. You know, the base terrain, topography, and some of the scenery, what goes exactly. into it. Yeah. That's it. So uh, next up, we'll show you guys the, the tools and, and basically the, the things that we use, right? The trees, the buildings, all that stuff. We'll have it all laid out for you. And then we'll take you in a time lapse sort of step by step to get a board that looks exactly like this one. So stay tuned. That is coming right up. All right, guys, here we are. So this is all the cool stuff that we need to set up a battle grid. Um, so first and foremost, you're gonna need one of these. Uh, this is a four by four game mat, um, and we'll show you what this looks like unfolded as we get into it. Um, but this is made of that mouse pad material. It's like neoprene, I think it's called. Um, and so I actually have two here on the board. I got the one in my hand that's gonna be the top that we're gonna lay over all of our terrain. And then I have one that's face down here that sort of denotes, and it might be hard to see on the black table, but another one here that sort of denotes the outer edge of the 4x4 play area, so that as we set up our terrain underneath this mat, we know exactly where to put it. Um, so the only thing that really goes under the mat are the hills. That's right. So we're using essentially 3 quarter inch styrofoam, or this pre-level built terrain that you yep. get for other wargaming. Uh, but styrofoam works whether you get between three quarters or an inch about. That's kind of about where we like to have each level change. So we're going to stack them and create our different levels and terrain features using that. We also have some rounded pieces. So as you taper off on ridge lines or at exactly. points of ridges, we start to use some of these more tapered pieces and just approximate the level changes. We just kind of agree on it as yeah. we set up a match. Exactly. Um, what yeah, about the other terrain? Yeah, so once the once the hills are down, right. we lay this sucker on top. Right. And then we have topography, and exactly. then we can start laying features. <laughs> some of the cool stuff, some of the details. So uh, the first thing I have here is a box of rocks. Um, super useful. I also have a bag of rocks. This is like pea gravel. So you can either, um, if you're brave, go outside and get this stuff, or you can like go to a, your local like nursery. They sell it like uh, aquarium the, rocks. Things aquarium like that. rocks, right? Um, these were actually made of uh, like plaster, um, and I painted them and dry brushed them. So some of the bigger ones you can get uh, like from your train store or whatever. They sell molds right. for this stuff. Less heavy than putting an actual rock, but they right. work. You can use real big rock. rocks. Real rocks actually work. And that's generally our rough terrain where we're gonna lay. Yeah. Exactly. Rock fields, or it just serves as cover. Yeah, or like a canyon natural. wall, something cool like that. Um, and then, you know, these smaller rocks that I have here, um, this is really more or less flocking, and I like to kind of spread these, and you'll see when we do it, um, on like the sort of the, the cusp of the hill and going down, so it kind of gives that natural look of, of rock fall, and it kind of highlights the features and the terrain level changes and things like that. Right. Um, the other detail I like to use are these things. Uh, it's called gamer's grass, um, and there's a billion different kinds of it. Uh, it's basically for model railroading. 
Um, and these serve as like little bushes and things like that. Um, there's some lichen in there as well. Um, so any of this stuff you can get from like model railroading and it just adds a little bit of color to the map. Like decorative. Yeah, mostly. exactly. It's mostly decorative. We don't use it to block line of sight or anything <clears> like that. Um, so that's the other thing we use. Um, and then once you've got sort of this base flocking down, right? Yeah, you can move on to some of the more detailed stuff. So um, these are these are trees, uh, woodland scenics, um, and you can buy a giant bag of them. Um, and we'll we'll have a different video showing you how we put these together. Um, but these are cool. Uh, this is one of Tom's brilliant ideas. We actually glued a washer to the bottom of this thing because every time you roll a die or bump a table, normally they fall over. But the washer gives them some some good weight to it. Um, and you know, I have a whole box of these. I have like fall colors and pine trees, all sorts of goofy stuff, and they're really cheap. Um, and they make the board look great. Um, so that's how we do our forests. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Kevin, your, your very own. You want to yeah, talk about these? Sure, let's the talk, rubbers. Let's talk about the natural stuff. Yeah, so what did you do here? You made these. These are rubber sheeting. So we essentially, I found, um, I don't remember the thickness, but yeah. eighth inch, a sixteenth of an inch. Something like that. Yeah, uh, something rubber like that. sheets, and we basically cut them to river shapes and different 45, 90 degree angles. Yeah, a little. Um, and just sort of made it so that we can make modular rivers. And then we painted the top with sort of a blue and black, sort of dark river streaky look to yeah. get it that. And I gave it like a nice high gloss spray on top to give it sort of that watery sheen when you look at it sort yeah. of on a planar, you know, level angle. Yeah, it's cool. <clears throat> Um, so pretty cool. That's how we do our rivers. We can piece them together and angle them any way we want. Yeah. Um, and that pretty much provides all of our, our natural features. Yes. Our natural yeah. features. <laughs> um, and then when we have our buildings, it's pretty much things in Z scale or six millimeter scale. You know, there's a yeah. lot of providers out there. We, we shop around all over the place to get these. Uh, but we go for anything that's industrial looking, industrial sectors or city sectors. You'll mm -hmm. see some of these larger buildings we have. Um, sort of great skyscrapers for our downtown areas. Mm. Um, really cool stuff. We go with like the industrial fuel tanks. These things are really easy to find in Z scale uh, model railroading, yep. or there's plenty of six millimeter scale uh, wargaming that um, you can get this stuff from different independent providers out there. Yeah. Um, pretty cool. So roads, bridges, a lot of the stuff is, is not that hard to find out there. Yeah, yeah, really cool. You know, these things. Laser cut acrylic is what, what we've used for these, um, and, and there's a we'll do a vendor review on these as well. Um, some great stuff. Um, they come with the templates, so you can paint the lines in the road and all that good stuff. But basically, what we're going to do next is um, we're going to get this board set up, and I think we'll keep it simple to start. So we're going to do, you know, basically some flocking, some trees, obviously the hills underneath. Uh, maybe we'll put a couple a uh, couple buildings down just to, to give it a, a nice look, but. Um, we'll do all of that on time lapse so you guys can kind of see it happening in action. Um, and hopefully that will give you a good idea of how to play on a very cool 3D hexless map. So stay tuned, time lapse is coming right up.
All right, and there we are. I love it. This is a beaut. I'm ready to play a battle report. How about you? I will. Stay tuned. Yes. We're going to join us. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is basically everything you guys would need. You watch step by step, uh, the materials, basically how to do it. Um, we'll do some deep dive videos on sort of each of these things. Um, you know, even some painting uh, tips on how we got the, the terrain uh, painted up. Some of the 3D printed stuff's a little tough to work with. Um, some of the resin stuff very easy to work with. So we'll do some of, the, some of that, how to make the trees. We talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, so stay tuned, we'll have a whole series uh, of this stuff coming up. Um, guys, don't forget to subscribe, uh, give us a comment, give us a like, let us know what you want to see. Um, so like I said, we got a whole series planned, but you know, it's all about what you want to see. So if there are certain things you want us to deep dive into, just let us know. Kevin is more than willing to make more rivers, hmm. uh, <laughs> including lava flows. I'm still waiting for those. That's on the, that's on the, the to do list. <laughs> all right. Well, guys, thanks again for watching. Uh, stay tuned. A lot more coming your way from Death From Above Wargaming.